Was everyone able to uh, go through and understand the uh, study? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. You know, I wanted to say something. I'm reading this book called um, More Than a Carpenter by Josh McDowell. Yes. I, I put it through Pastor before I started, before I even ordered it. But he's talking in here about uh, the truth about Christ never gets to people's minds that don't believe in him, that the people mm. that do believe in him were enabled, our mind is enabled by the Holy Spirit to comprehend him. Amen, amen. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I, I, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's a lot of, we, we need to be in, in concert with the Holy Spirit and, and that's mm -hmm. where the, the understanding uh, comes. Right, and he also said to have a full relationship with God, you have to use all three, mind, body, and spirit. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I think that, that that goes along with this whole study. And this, what we're doing tonight dovetails in with a pastor's study, uh, walking in the spirit. And it, it's, a, it's all uh, really... Uh, you know, to fully comprehend the, the, the scriptures, you have to have that relationship with, with God. Hopefully we'll be able to get through all this. There's a lot of stuff here, Dale. Yeah, there is. <laughs> you can always yeah, say Dale, we're talkers, you know what I mean? You get off on a tangent. <laughs> That's fine. We'll chase some rabbits if need be. <laughs> we'll tell Pastor he just has to give up next week if you need more time. <laughs> you might enjoy I don't think it. he'd mind having a break. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. We have. Oh, here we're at uh, six thirty. Yep. Oh. All right. Okay. Elaine, would you like to open us, up, open us in prayer tonight? Yes, I would. Um, thank you, Lord God, for bringing us all together. Thank you for Ron, who has uh, helped us and Dale. Amen. Not a computer person. I want to thank you for bringing us all together, getting us through this dark days that we're facing, keeping our family safe and healthy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. 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 So, uh, what we're going to be looking at tonight is uh, the language of God, and we're going to look at uh, a way of of uh, looking at the scriptures and possibly, you know, unlocking spiritual meanings of of, of scriptures, uh, things that you may not have considered before. And so, uh, like I was explaining to Elaine, is uh, this what we're going to look at tonight dovetails in with uh, walking uh, with the Spirit. And uh, we're going to investigate the language of God, and, and the Bible is more than just words. Uh, mm -hmm. The Bible is, collection, is a collection of uh, books written uh, that... Uh, by, by a spiritual being, uh, the Bible has one author who is God and is written uh, by men, but through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. We're, we're not humans having a, a, a spiritual experience, but rather we are uh, spiritual beings having a human uh, experience. And, and the Bible is a spiritual book written by a divine spiritual being to, to us spiritual beings. And the, the whole Bible was uh, written for all of mankind. And it's, it's a collection of uh, is it, uh, 66 books, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but you can see uh, it, it is the, um, they call it the scarlet thread. And, and it's all tied together because it is, you know, one author. So, I'll be right back. Um, and really, uh, 
a, a born again believer are enabled through the Holy Spirit to understand the Word of God. Uh, God desires and, and invites uh, uh, we we as children to understand the Scriptures. And Matthew eleven fifteen, uh, he who has an ear, let him hear and understand. But uh, we we but we must uh, hear, see, and understand. Uh, with our spirit man and not the human earthly man. So in other words, it's like we, it, it's a cooperative effort with the Holy Spirit. Uh, and you need to, to read it uh, as God, God talking to your spirit man and not, not your flesh, even though uh, a lot of it will, will correlate with the flesh. But, but when you actually uh, realize that the scriptures are, are written to help us understand the, the kingdom of God. That's, uh, the, if you look at the New Testament, everything that Jesus was saying, uh, uh, his ministry really was the kingdom of God. Some of the things that he'll say, the kingdom of God is like this, okay? And we'll, we'll get into that more as we go here. So we can use the, the Bible uh, as, as a dictionary to find meanings of words or, or phrases. So the, the meanings are, are the same throughout the entire Bible. And uh, as we study it, and we, we realize this, and then it just opens up a whole new, uh, a whole new um, way of, of seeing really what's in the Bible. We'll, we'll begin in uh, John 1, 1. Uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things that were made by Him, uh, all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. And in Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And so if, if we read uh, John 1.1, 1, 1, and then we correlate that with uh, Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. Uh, so uh, in John 1.1, 1, 1, who, who is, who is the, the scripture talking about the word? Does anyone, anyone uh, want, want to take uh, answer that question? Jesus. Yes. <laughs> so knowing that, knowing that the word is Jesus, now in John 1.1, 1, 1, we can um, insert the name Jesus mm -hmm. in place of the word. And so, um, Charlie, would you like to read John 1.1, 1, 1, wherever there's a blank, uh, put the word Jesus in there. Okay. Okay. Um, John 1 1. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. And, and that's, in the beginning with God, all things were made by Jesus. And without Jesus was not anything made. So in, uh, in Jesus was life, and, and Jesus was the light of men, and Jesus shines in the darkness, and the darkness comprehends it not. And so we also see that Jesus was uh, with God on the day of creation, and we also see that, that Jesus was uh, light, okay, and so um, this uh, uh, passage of scripture also uh, says that Jesus himself was the creator, because all things were made by Jesus, and without uh, Jesus wasn't anything made. Does anybody have any questions? No. Mm -mm. Okay. And so by this, 
uh, what, what I've illustrated here is you can actually uh, take, take the word of God and scripture interprets itself. And so what we are using here is what is called an exegesis, is we're, we're reading the scriptures and we're letting them, we're, we're um, uh, pulling out meaning uh, of scripture through uh, the use of, of, of other scriptures as well. Okay. So in Genesis 1, 26, uh, and God said, let us make man in our own image after our own likeness and, and let them have uh, dominion over the earth. Uh, go to my notes here. Let us make man, where are we, where are we at? First column, last yeah. paragraph. Let us make man in our own image after our own likeness and let them have dominion over the fish and the seas and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Uh, Jane, who is uh, uh, God speaking about when, when God said, let us? Make man in in our image, the Trinity. Correct. So we have we see here in in uh, Genesis one twenty six uh, that the God uh, that Jesus was with God on the day of creation, and Jesus was the Creator, and uh, it is the first mention of the, of the Trinity because it was also the Holy Spirit was present as well. And so um, then we'll go to uh, Ron. Could you read uh, John uh, 6.35? And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of the life, that he cometh to me shall never, be hung never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. So we see here that uh, Jesus is uh, the Word, He is light, and now we see uh, that Jesus is the bread of life. And so um, the, thing, the thing about uh, bread is um, bread is like what sustains us, you know, as far as um, we, we get nutrition from, from the bread. And so we see that uh, Jesus being the word, so uh, this is what is uh, spoken, you know, in the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread. And, and that would be uh, th through Jesus, we get our, our nourishment, our daily uh, feeding. You know, in, in when, when we, we read the scriptures, when we meditate on, on his word it's, it's and if we don't meditate on his word and we don't receive um our nourishment and we are spiritually starving so it is impertinent that we ha uh, keep our our spiritual man maintained through the the feasting on 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 his word daily amen amen so, uh, Joyce, can you read this uh, next section here? Joyce? Uh, you... Sorry, I didn't unmute. No, that's so... fine. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Do you want you read... me to do John 14, 6 or what? Uh, yeah, we'll just we'll just go down to there. Uh, everyone should have read from, uh, you know, that John one down through there. Mm -hmm. So, John fourteen six. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Okay, so John fourteen six. Uh, Norma, 
who is uh, Jesus? He, he, he's the way. Yes. And he's the truth. And he's yes. the light. Amen. So, so for, through all these scriptures, it it uh, any any time then that you see. Uh, in reference to the way, the truth, the life, then, then you can, just like we did before, you can uh, ins insert Jesus' name in there. But in, in doing so, it, I, it, it like emphasizes scripture, you know, whenever you, whenever you do, do this exercises, it really pulls out, you know, the, the meaning, so. Okay, um, in John 8, 58, and Jesus said, truly, truly, I say unto you that before Abraham was, I am. I am is what God said his name uh, to Moses. His name to Moses in the burning bush when Moses asked, who shall I say is, is sending me? And he, he uh, and God spoke and, and said to them, I am. And the Jews knew this was uh, God's name. So uh, when Jesus is stating that he is God and that he is the only way uh, to God because he, he was stating that he was God and, and the uh, uh, Sanhedrin they, they took this as blasphemy, and this is what led to uh, Jesus' crucifixion. But he, he was just speaking the truth, amen? Mm -hmm. So in John uh, eighteen thirty six, Jesus uh, answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then uh, I would. Then would my servants... Uh, uh, fight that I should be delivered unto the Jews and, and not by my kingdom, not uh, from hence. And so therefore said unto him, Art thou the king? Then, and Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am the king. This is um, to this end I uh, was I born, and for this cause came I into the world. And I should bear witness only to the truth. Everyone that is of truth heareth my voice. And Pilate said unto him, what is truth? And then he said uh, this, he went out uh, again unto the Jews and said to them, I find in him uh, no fault at all. If only Pilate had, had uh, listened and, and uh, he he had truth standing right in front of him that he would have, have come to know truth and uh only truth can be discerned uh uh only truth can discern truth so um also we, we read in the scripture that Pilate's wife you know gave him you know, she she remember she had a dream that that uh uh he should not have have uh, been responsible for the, this man's life. So um, that is why he washed his hands of it. So it was the, the Sanhedrin that actually, uh, well, we put, put uh, Christ to death. So... Um, Uh, Jamie, would you like to read uh, John uh, 9, 5? As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And so here again, we see uh, Jesus is the light of the world. Amen. Amen. So uh, Matthew three ten, and, and disciples came unto him 
and, and said unto him, why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered and, and said unto them, because it is given unto me to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it, it is not given. So, uh, Rod, how are we to know the, the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven? Sorry, I was talking on mute. Um, <clears throat> um, how, how, how is it that uh, we are to know the mysteries of heaven? Let's read it. Um, because God gave them to, gives it to us? Yes, it's mm -hmm. a, a cooperative um, with, with the Holy Spirit who reveals it to us. Amen. Amen. Give it to uh, uh, God's children to know. And this is what Elaine was uh, talking about before we had started the study, that it is only through uh, the, um, that God gives us that, that knowledge and, and that understanding uh, through, through the Holy Spirit. So, uh, Shirley, who... Uh, the them and in the mysteries of the, the the parables. Who are who is he talking about when he's saying them? I said non believers. Am, am I on? Not non believers. Yes. Yeah. And it's actually uh, the believer believers are the ones that are given uh, the, the meanings precise. of the parables. Right. So the non believers <laughs> Don't have a clue. <laughs> right. <laughs> is, is basically, yeah. So, yes, you're, you're right. Because uh, is sent unto them because is, is given. Yeah. So, uh, Joyce, and why? I put because their hearts are hard that they can't receive, you know, because they're non-believers. Does anybody else want to add anything? I do. I put down that yes. non-believers are uninstructed, and they because they don't know Christ, he uses the parables to make the concepts in the Bible more readily understood to them. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing is uh, in 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 the Old Testament it was prophesied that the Messiah would speak in, in parables. And so this is one way that we can know that uh, it, was, it was another, another um, validation, verification that, that Jesus Christ was the Christ. Elaine, do you have a question? Oh, other Elaine, do you have a question? Okay, what's up? Uh, sorry, you're unmuted. I was trying to get your attention for the last 10 minutes. I yes. people are talking about the spirit. The natural, the Bible says the natural man, his word is foolishness. Mm -hmm. But those who worship me, worship me in spirit and in truth. So if you don't worship God or even read spiritually, you, it's impossible to even see God if you're not in the spirit. You said in the flesh, you can't please him. So if we read the Bible, we have to read the Bible not in a natural mind. Not mm -hmm. We have to Amen. read the spiritual realm in order to get the things of God. Amen. Okay. And that is what we had discussed in the beginning of this uh, study was um, the Word of God written to uh, uh, the spiritual man. You know, in us, and uh, Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. If you can't get past that, <laughs> you know what I mean? You have to say amen that, that in the beginning was, uh, was God. In the beginning, God, and he was the creator. The, that's just the, the basis and the, the platform for, uh, you know, all of uh, all of scripture, you know, was, was written to uh, the spirit. Amen. 
Okay, Psalms 119, 105. And the word, the word is a lamp under my feet and a light under my path. Okay, um, Norma, what, what is the, the word? In this? The lamp and the light. Okay. And um, Elaine, you, you want to tell us uh, what... What the difference between a lamp and a light is? Which Elaine? Uh, Elaine Berger. Okay. Um, I, I put down the lamp chases the darkness and the light shows us the path to be on. Yes, yes. Yep. That's, that's excellent. Jamie, um, hmm? why do you think the, the, uh, they, have a, a lamp and a, and a light. What do you see any any difference between that? Um, for me, I think the lamp, like symbolically, maybe would be the Bible. Okay. And Jesus showed us. Oh, the there you go. go. Yeah, yes, I like Jesus that. Is yeah, really. Excellent. Excellent. Oh. The the thing with uh, if, if you're walking. You know, that's what we're talking about is walking with the spirit and in the spirit. If you're walking along and you have a lamp, okay, it would be uh, showing you where, where you're walking, okay? And so what it is is the, the, the word of God will keep us from stumbling, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Because it's up and close. Yeah. And, and as uh, Elaine had pointed out, it also lights the path and gives us direction. And so we could see now uh, uh, Jesus, you know, he's the light and he, through the Holy Spirit, will keep us from stumbling. And he will uh, also uh, light, light our, our, our path. Uh, so why, why are these two things you know, in walking with the spirit, why are why are they both you know beneficial? Any any more comments? Well, they all work hand in hand. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's what I said. I I looked at it as the the uh, lamp is a container. You know, and it holds the candle or the oil or whatever process you're using the lamp, you know, to be lit by. So the container is actually us. And then the oil, oil, of course, represents the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. So the yep. Holy Spirit and Jesus in us, then our light shines on this earth. Mm -hmm. Light, too, is it drives out darkness. And that's what we read in, in uh, John 1.1. 1, 1. And, the, and the darkness could not comprehend the light. Right. In other words, it's like with, without, without the, the, the light drives away uh, the, the darkness. Actually, the, the definition of darkness, you know, is the absence of light. I mean, if, mm -hmm. we, if we didn't have the light, we wouldn't know anything about darkness. Right. So, mm -hmm. so it, it goes back to um, God Himself. You know, if, if you know He being the light, and that it's if we didn't have um, if we didn't have a knowledge of God, and really darkness is the absence of uh, God. You know? mm -hmm. Okay, Joyce, could you read uh, Matthew 13, 44? Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hid it. And for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Elaine Cambrick, 
Yeah. Uh, what is the treasure in the field? Okay. I'm not too sure, but would it be the believer? Uh, any anyone else? Kingdom of heaven. Was that? Yes, it's it's the, uh, the it's it's the kingdom of it's the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so whenever we find uh, not only the, the the kingdom of heaven, but but Jesus Christ, right. he's the pearl of great price. Right. So, um, greater love hath no man than he lay down his life, you know, for, I mean, God, uh, Jesus laid down his life for us. Right. So, uh, you know, when, when mm -hmm. we find him, we um, a actually, you know, we, we put the spirit man, or uh, excuse me, the fleshly man to death daily uh, once we find uh Jesus Christ, we put our 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 own mm -hmm. uh, you know flesh to death, and that's what it's talking about. Is uh, it's it's a complete you know one eighty from ourselves, and now uh, is un, un, unto uh, Jesus because he purchased us with his blood, you know, on Calvary. Amen. So. I think we've already answered this. What uh, what is the one uh, pearl of great price, and that is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, one thing I find when I was doing the study is, you know, Jesus was perfect. You know, yep. he needed nothing from man. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that's how a pearl is, because you know, like a diamond or any other stone, you you get out of the earth, it's encapsulated in in rock oh, or yeah. in earth and man has to grind it and cut it and polish it but a pearl a it's perfect right out of the oyster they just have to wipe it mm -hmm. throw a oh. hole in it and make it into a piece of jewelry it needs no touch by man right. i right. thought that was really interesting that is <laughs> Uh, Charlie, uh, Matthew twenty-seven forty. Okay. And saying, "Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest in in three days, save thyself. If thy be the Son of God, come down from the cross." Jesus was not talking about the literal temple. Uh -uh. What he was talking about was his body, his death, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. his resurrect, resurrection in three days was the temple that mm -hmm. would be uh, built in three days. Uh, and another um, John, uh, another uh, chapter said, I will raise up, raise it up in three days. Yep. So he mm -hmm. was talking about the resurrection, his death mm -hmm. and his resurrection. Amen. <clears throat> So, uh, Jamie? Yep. Uh, Luke, Luke 10, 17. And the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I behold Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you to tread on the serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. Joyce, uh, what is he talking about literally uh, the serpents and scorpions? Well, there's other scriptures in the Bible that notes them as meaning, um, you know, demons or darkness and, um, you know, but they can't hurt us because Jesus overcame. Right. Amen. 
Uh, I'm, I'm reminded in uh, Genesis that uh, when uh, uh, the whole thing with uh, Adam and Eve and the fall, mm -hmm. that uh, Satan was referred to as, as the serpent. And there's another scripture saying that uh, Lucifer was the most cunning of, of all. Mm -hmm. and so what we're looking at here is we're, we're given... Um, um, the, there, the reason I'm bringing this scripture up is there are some that would take this and 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 use it uh, to. And they actually would would get uh, scorpions and that and and snakes and serpents and and uh, having them them bite them or whatever and the, you know some. But but this is talking about literal, uh, literally you know the. It, it's it's spiritual, you know. It's not it's not physical. Uh, serpents or scorpions is is talking about uh, the the demons that we have power over. The, mm -hmm. uh, and any when questions? He, well, when he uses um, the serpents and scorpions, he he's more referring to the poisonous and hurtful nature. Mm -hmm. of the demons are similar to the way scorpions and snakes are hurtful and poisonous. Yes. So he's making that contrast. Yeah. Yes. He's also that, talking about the sting. The sting that that can have upon you. Mm -hmm. right. The scripture mm -hmm. somewhere it says about the sting uh I can't remember where it is, but the sting of of of, of uh, death. When, yeah, when is that happens. Like, oh, oh, death! Where is thy sting? Right. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll look at the uh, First Samuel seventeen forty four, and and the Philist and and the Philistine said to said to David. Uh, Come to me, and I will uh, come to me, and I will will give uh, thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and the beasts of the field. So, um, actually, that was the Philistines saying to David, "I got, I got the yeah. question wrong." <laughs> <laughs> what, I understood. You know what? What were what were they? What was he talking about? Here, Ron. When he says to David, "I will, I will uh, come to me, and I will give your your flesh unto the the fowls of the air and the beasts of the field." To be honest with you, I'm not sure. Kevin, uh, I'll go. Jamie. Oh. Um, they thought that they were going to, like David was easy pickings, mm -hmm. you know, they thought they'd quickly take him down, yeah. but what they didn't realize is that God created him for that purpose, yeah. so God strengthened him to be able to take him. When I look at this whole scripture, what it is, is David was possessed by the Holy Spirit at this time. And I believe that, that um, when, when reading this is Goliath what was possessed as well. Mm -hmm. He said unto David, I will give you, uh, your, uh, give your flesh to the fowls of the air and the beasts of the field. It's both talking spiritually is the the files of the the air and the beasts of the field are the uh what's also in, in other scriptures uh like heavenly hosts um would would be um the the demons so, yeah so this wasn't just a, a physical battle it was uh a, a, a spiritual black battle. Is there any questions or or uh, discussion? Yes, I found a scripture, Mark four, where it talks about the parable, and 
so when we're talking about the birds of the year and the beasts of the field here, that that parable about the sower, yes. mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. says, um, you know, the sower sows the word. These are the ones who are beside the road where the road is sown. And when they hear immediately, Satan comes and takes away the word. Uh -huh. So it's referring, same thing as this, where he says, you know, I'm going to kill you and you'll be laying there in the birds of the field and beasts. Well, this is the same thing. So he's referring to Satan here. And then in Matthew 13, 4, it refers to the wicked one. The wicked yeah. one is long. Just, you know, just to, to have show you two ways that, you know, mm -hmm. Satan and the devil are always wanting to come and take from us, take from us. Just yeah. Like that. Okay. I, we got through quite a bit here today. We're almost done. <laughs> Jamie, would you like to read the last scripture there? Jamie, with us? Hello? No, Jamie, and it looks like Ron and Jamie are not on. Ron and Jamie are gone. That's, That's why his screen went away. Something happened because the screen doesn't even have your no no no. More. But we don't have that much more. Just read Mark. Oh, that's okay. One seventeen. Okay, and Jesus said unto them, "Come uh, after me, and I will make you you become uh, fishers of men." Uh, Norma, uh, what does he mean by fishers of men? Um, he was, we are the fishermen of men, and we're to bring God, people to God. Okay. So, uh, whenever you go uh, fishing, what are you trying to catch? Fish. Fish. <laughs> so we're trying to catch people. Okay. 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 And so, uh, Elaine Camber, what do you think that you want to do? When, when you, uh, you you want to draw the the fish in, what do you need to do that? Dale. Yes. I'm sorry, but Jamie just called me, and I didn't hear what you were saying. She said it's storm, getting ready to storm, or it's storming, and they got kicked off the internet. Okay. Okay. Uh, they did say it was going to She's going storm. To try to get back on. So, but that's okay. what happened. Okay. okay. We're almost done. <laughs> yeah, we're almost okay. done. Yeah. So, um, Elaine Berger, uh, how do you fish for men? What would you use for bait? I think you would use the yourself as an example. I mean, if you're walking with the Spirit of God, Mm. You have to live like Jesus did, and people will see that. And they'll okay. Come. I think that's example. Uh -huh. a good. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm I'm reminded of the scripture that we are uh, the salt of the earth. Yeah. What one, one thing about salt is it makes uh, people thirsty. Yeah. And so and and also um, it it it. It'll uh, uh, purify things as well. So uh, us being uh, salt, we first have to become pure, and it's like are untainted. So, and then when we we speak the word, and so the word itself is the bait. Okay, and to where it's like the word. Uh, what the scripture said, the word will not return void, and the word in itself is equipped to um, do do the work of 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 the of, in, in uh, concert with the spirit. It will uh, not return void. And so, uh, Shirley, how do you think that you would cast a, a spiritual net to uh, capture? Uh, capture men. I would uh, share the word of God with, with men and uh, 
uh, speak of a uh, testimony of what God has done in, in, in your life. Through, through your testimony? Okay. Uh -huh. And Amen. share the word. Yes. <laughs> in, indeed. Okay, it's been good. Has, uh, did everyone in, in, enjoy it tonight? Yes, yes thank you, Dad. Yes, very very good. Good. Oh, you're welcome. So it's my, my pleasure. So, <laughs> Joyce, do you want to close us out? Sure. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and this night that we could gather in your name and learn more about your word. And Lord, as we concluded with being fishers of men, I pray that your Holy Spirit would be with us and go before us and prepare a way and help us, Father God, to be able to use in that capacity, Lord, to bring more people into your kingdom. Lord, it's a privilege and an honor to serve you. And we thank you, Father God, for being here with us and meeting with us and helping us to learn more about you and to grow in you each and every day. And it's in your name I pray. Amen.